Carol Freeman here. I am here with Megan and actually Dr. Uh, how do you say your last name? Crude. Dr. Crude, uh, dermatologist. It's an amazing keto success story. And so thank you so much for sharing your story. So tell, you, you know, how did you, you know, how did you find a keto diet and what has it done for you? Uh, I'll try to keep it to the briefer story. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been big my whole life and been through numerous other diets and had some success but it never was lasting and um, decided around the time when we lost some family members very young to different complications of diabetes and cancer and everything that I really needed to get my act together and I'd had some previous success doing low carb diets um, not particularly keto but decided to go back to that and Again, had some good success with that, lost about 70 pounds over a year, but then kind of got stuck. Um, I subsequently was diagnosed with a few other food allergies that I didn't know I had, which eliminated some of the things that I was still eating. And um, by process of eliminating those and doing my own research into the ketogenic way of living, it rolled into that um, and really it snowballed. and. As of now, I've lost about 125 pounds. So, what? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So, I, you were, I met you last night too, yes. and, and you were sharing about how this is like the smallest you've been pretty yeah. much your entire life. Um, my memories from grade school when I was going to see a nutritionist with all these check boxes of all the little things you had to eat every day. The smallest I ever got at that point was about 180 pounds, and I'm a little under 160 now. Wow. And I was 14 years old at that Congratulations. Point, so. Yeah, thank you. And so we were talking last night about yes. how you see this impacting dermatological work that you do. Right. Uh, what kind of things do you see that this is, is good for? So in dermatology, we see anything and everything. Um, but there's definitely a few things that I feel could be helped by this uh, way of living. Notably, acne, uh, which is, it affects every teenager, even if they claim it doesn't. It does. Yeah, and my son has had an amazing transformation with his own following keto too, right. so. So not only just the general hormones, but we see a lot of women who come in with PCOS, which worsens their acne and makes it difficult for us to treat sometimes. Um, but also a lot of our inflammatory rashes, so psoriasis, mm. eczema, um, eczema tends to be linked to food allergies and food sensitivities anyway, and these people may not realize it, but they could be eating things that are exacerbating it. Mm. Um, and just in general, people who have overall inflammation. Um, a lot of these rashes aren't just skin deep, they have internal manifestations as well, leading to higher risk for heart disease, other autoimmune conditions and things, so that if there's any way we can reduce the inflammation, uh, the hope is not only will their skin get better, but their overall health will improve as well. Yeah, yeah, and I personally worked with a lady um, client of mine that had Haley Haley's, yes. which I've never heard of yeah. before. But it's, it's a more rare genetic condition, but it's it's horrendous for people who do mm -hmm. have it. Yeah, and this this lady, she you know, was 65 years old when she started working on keto with me, and she was not even able to work anymore because of the how severe this impacted her life. After uh, I, I don't remember, maybe six months of following it, yeah. she uh, she quit with me because she was feeling so well yeah. that she ended well, up good. she wanted to go back to work. Like right. she had freedom first time in her life, right? And yeah. uh, it was amazing transformation. So I've seen a couple of right. success stories myself without even focusing on right. dermatology. So I can't even imagine yeah. what's possible. Um, and and it's just the beginnings. I don't necessarily discuss keto with every yeah. patient that comes in the office, but more and more frequently we have patients or parents bringing their children in mm -hmm. asking what we can do on a more natural approach as opposed to taking pills and putting creams on. Yeah. And that's when it kind of opens the door to discussing that possibility. And yeah. some of them are very open to it and some of them give you that deer in headlights look. Yeah. Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're having any skin conditions, start asking your doctor about uh, nutritional therapies. They may not know about anything. They may not. But uh, the, when we start asking those questions, then they're going to start looking for those answers. And right. Where Where do you practice? I practice in a private practice up in a suburb of Cleveland called Medina, Ohio. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you have to fly out to see her, and uh, yeah, yeah, we're happy to see anyone. And I'm actually part of a group practice that does focus more on holistic. 
uh, aspects of things um, compared to other places I've worked. Okay. A lot of our own uh, workers there follow the ketogenic way of living and we have a whole subset of our practice that is on its own just holistic medicine okay. as well. So that's great. Yeah. Um, let's see, let's talk about a couple of the myths about this keto diet, okay? okay? Um, it's not healthy, it's not natural. I don't understand how anyone can look at what people actually eat on the diet and think that that's not what we should be eating. Mm -hmm. It is normal food, yeah. like that's what I tell people. People focus on what you can't have, but really focus on getting real food, learning how to cook if you're interested in that, and not grabbing boxes and processed foods. And mm -hmm. I, I just don't see how any of that could be seen as unhealthy. Yeah, like you were saying last night, it's like meat, vegetables, and healthy, normal fats. Right. Like that's exactly. what we eat. And when people actually see plates of food that we eat, it's like, oh, yeah, that just looks like a healthy meal. Exactly. It's a plate that you get out at a restaurant right. or when you went to a steakhouse mm -hmm. or something. And, um, you know, so I, I fully disagree with yeah. any of those. Myths. Another common one that people object, and even doctors are telling people, is that, well, it's not sustainable. What do you think about that? It takes effort to sustain anything, but I try to look at this as a lifestyle mm -hmm. and not a diet. I feel the best I have ever felt in my life, and I really don't plan on going back from yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I personally have some accountability just because of my food allergies, mm -hmm. and I know the consequences of eating things with those in them, so it helps with that. But I love what I eat. I get very creative with it. I feed multiple members of my family multiple times a week. No one has ever complained about it. <laughs> and everyone is benefiting from it. And I don't see any issue with being able to continue this long term. And I don't see why down the road at any given point in time, it would go from being a healthy diet to an unhealthy one. Wonderful. Anything else you want to add or you want to share with the viewers? No, just if you haven't tried this go ahead and give it a try it gets easier the more you do it it just becomes natural you don't really want the stuff that you shouldn't be having anyway and if and when you do go see your doctors keep in mind they may not know about it we don't get that much education if any in medical school so feel free to have a conversation with them about your interest in trying this diet and um, hopefully they'll be on board to allow it or at least try to educate themselves as to what, what it involves. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Kurt, right. uh, you so for much your for time. Thanks me. for sharing that's your wonderful. story and congratulations so again on thank you your so success much. and health. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, that's all for now. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.